So I'm not really a gimbal guy. Yeah, he's not. And this is a gimbal review from a filmmaker who doesn't like to use gimbals. But there's always been one reason why I don't. He thinks they're annoying, kind of cumbersome to use. I think they're kind of annoying, cumbersome to use, but I think I might have found one that's a little easier. The easiest gimbal to use, the Weeble L3. <laughs> Dude, he got the plug for me. Thanks, Caleb. <laughs> I said Weeble <laughs> What do you know, another uh, coffee drinking YouTuber. Cheers. Okay, the Weebill 3. The Weebill. Weebill? Two E's. The Weebill 3. Now, I'm gonna cut right to the chase here because there are some talking points that Zaihun has asked me to talk about because this video is sponsored, full disclosure. But there is one thing that I think separates this gimbal from others and is a clear reason why I would use this bad boy. And it's as simple as this wrist stopper and this handle. It's like you hold it, this is like a stopper. So you can one hand it, two hand it. I haven't used gimbals in the past like I mentioned in the intro or like Caleb mentioned in the intro. It's because they're really exhausting to use. Now in Hollywood, on big productions, rarely do you see a filmmaker, a DP, or a cam or B cam breaking their back. They have an easy rig, they have a Movi, they have a steady cam. You got it, everything balanced. Just turn it on. First, first flight. I mean, that does feel good. Just the fact that you have you can do this or this. They basically have gear to where they can run said stabilizing feature. Ooh, Discord's going crazy. Let's mute that. They have a stabilizing apparatus that balances the camera, but also allows them to fly that thing for as long as they need. Now, the problem with handheld gimbals in general is that though not super heavy, they get pretty heavy. That's good. Little cinema camera on a sick little gimbal. And honestly, you get really tired and it's your back starts to hurt, your arms get fatigued, and that's when your filmmaking level somewhat drops. And then it goes in the closet and it rarely comes out. Oh, slippery! Now, let's actually talk to someone who is a gimbal guy. All right, Dewey, check this thing out. Let me know what you think. What is this? Dude, this thing is small. This is pretty cool. <laughs> get two hands on I'm there, dude. Lie, dude. Whoa, I can't believe how much smaller they've gotten. If you take off this little bottom tripod, that is tiny. Dude, I also feel like I like how there's a lot less, like to set it up, it seems like a lot quicker. Like there's a lot less knobs. You can't charge this thing with USB-C, can you? Oh yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's insane. I've been looking for a gimbal option that I can use longer and still meets my requirements for being handheld. Because the benefit of a handheld gimbal is that it's handheld and it's cheaper than a Steadicam, than a Movi with an easy rig. It can carry less weight and it hurts your back generally, but this thing solves for that. It is still heavy, you will still get a little tired, but this wrist stopper and this handle make a massive difference. I feel like I can use this longer than other handheld gimbals and will most likely be bringing this out on more shoots. So that is my number one reason to buy this bad boy is because of those handles. Now what's funny is those are actually not super technical aspects of the gimbal. It's like, it's just, a piece you attach here via a thumb screw and a, t and a piece you attach here via a thumb screw. But that is enough of a difference to make me want to use this. Now, in terms of the stabilization quality, I've had been more than pleased with what I've been able to get from this. It looks great. It was able to fly my FX3, which I'm filming on now, as well as the new Fuji camera that just dropped. But quickly, let's run through the other aspects of this bad boy. Uh, so what you have here is the trigger right here. You have your joystick your joystick, you have your joystick, your menu system, you have your dials. Um, generally speaking, I don't use this stuff a ton. I just kind of like the gimbal to set and forget and then not use all these fancy features, but it's nice you have them, as well as you have a light and a mic jack. Now, a mic jack to me is very interesting because I actually haven't used a mic jack on a gimbal, and typically, because you don't want 
you you know it's hard to use a mic you just kind of just use the scratch audio on your camera and let it rip and figure it out later and post with some foley and sound design but having a mic jack is super interesting and something i'm excited to use yeah you can go like pump it. so with the light on the gimbal you get bicolor so you can make it a little warm make it a little cooler i don't see myself using the light a ton because it is on camera i don't use on camera lights a lot anymore but i did when i filmed weddings so if you are a wedding filmmaker then this gimbal could be very interesting because of that light if you're shooting a dance scene if you're shooting and it's really dark i mean every wedding filmmaker knows like if you're not able to bump that iso up late like you need some light and the fact that it's built in just makes it so the gimbal can be used well with that light because mounting a light on your gimbal is just going to make your rig heavier the other thing I could see it being used for well is skateboarding. That on-camera light for skate scenes is pretty common, but for what I'm filming personally, I'm trying to create as cinematic of an image as possible, which means I need off-camera light. I need to be able to set up uh, some Aperture 120Ds, some Aperture Spotlights that are off-camera and that I can shape to give myself the most cinematic image and on-camera lights typically don't really do that. This gimbal also only weighs 1.13 kilograms, which is, how much is that in pounds actually? Two and a half pounds, as I look here on my calculator thing. So this thing's only two and a half pounds, so when you put your camera and lens on, most likely you are looking about probably around six pounds of weight. Generally speaking, it feels really good in the hand. It has that this lock feature so that the gimbal won't move when you pack it away. Um, and it feels good. It feels like it has plastic in the places where it can be lighter, but metal in the places where you need it to be strong. Um, looks fairly robust, feels fairly robust. And the battery runtime, I have not ran this thing out of battery at all. Um, I typically just plug it into my Apple charger. I don't know if that wrecks the battery or not because it's too strong, but it kind of just warp speed charges this thing and I've never had it die on set. The actual runtime on this thing is 21 hours, which is a ton of hours. If you are filming for longer than 21 hours, well, that's just, let's just say that that's maybe too long. Maybe you should take take a break, grab some water, grab some crafty and have a day two, right? You need a, a day two. But I think that 21 hour runtime, if you are going on a backpacking trip or you're in a scenario where you can't charge the gimbal, that 21 hour runtime for battery makes a massive difference. All right, everybody. So hopefully you've enjoyed this not so technical review of this gimbal. At the end of the day, as a filmmaker, I just want my gear to perform it's duty so I can get my shot, so I can capture my image and make my film. I don't wanna be tinkering with a ton of stuff, I just need it to work. Just like a tripod, you put your stick, you put your camera on your sticks and it just works. I want the same thing out of my gimbal. What I want is something that's very stable and that I can run a long time without basically hurting myself. And this gimbal does both of those things. So if you are interested, check out the link below. Thank you for Zihun. Thank you to Zaihan for sending me this gimbal and for sponsoring today's video. Appreciate you guys being here and uh, we'll see you in the next video content thing that we make. Videos for the internet, as Jesse Driftwood says. And uh, yeah, thanks. Bye.